Hello, everyone. Tables can be used with slicers, just like pivot tables, and this is a very useful feature. But there is a function that can help you to unlock the full analytical potential of table slicers by applying them to formulas and making formulas interactive. It is the function subtotal. As a result, you can test multiple scenarios with one formula, analyze selection as compared to total, and save time on manual adjustments by making functions interactive. For example, the filter function in this formula reacts to slicer selections. You can also add additional slicers without changing the formula. The function subtotal has to be used with a trick. Let's see how this trick works for most versions in Microsoft 365. To apply the slicers, I will first convert this data range to a table by clicking it and pressing Ctrl and T together. Then in the Insert tab, I will add a slicer. I will choose Outlet and Brand as the slicers and format them. The table is called Table 9. If I add up the sales units in the table using the normal sum function, then all the rows of the table will be included in the calculation. By the way, I can reference the table column by typing the table name and the name of the column in square brackets. But if the sum function is applied through the subtotal function, then only visible rows are included in the calculation. Subtotal has a list of functions. 1 through 11, ignore filtered out rows, and 101 through 111, ignore manually hidden rows as well. I will choose 9, which is sum, and specify the table column. The numbers match until I change the slicer selection. The formula gets interesting if I add a condition. I need a comparison to the total for several years. Calculating the total is quite straightforward. I will just use the SUMIF function, specify the range that has to match the criteria, that is the year column, the criterion is in cell F3, And the sales units have to be summed up. The sum if function works with all cells, not only the visible ones. If I change the slicer selection, the numbers stay the same, and the subtotal function does not have a condition. So we need a trick. I will add the subtotal function, number 2 for count. The subtotal function should go through each cell of the sales units column, and because it ignores hidden rows, it should count these as zeros and the visible ones as ones. So the trick is to feed the subtotal function the whole column of sales units one cell at a time. And that's where I'll use the indirect function. In the indirect function, I will specify column E, and the rows will be given back by the row function.
of the sales units column. Let's evaluate. And the indirect and row functions together deliver the whole column row by row. And the subtotal function gives back an array of ones, because currently nothing is selected in the slicers, and all rows are visible. I will pack these functions into the sum product function. The year should equal to the cell F3. And for the calculation itself, The sales units column. So in the sum product function, three arrays are multiplied the condition array, the visibility array, and the numbers themselves. And the results are summed up. Let's test. Select a year, and for example, outlet 2. And the number is correct. If you expect the columns to change positions, then the E has to be made dynamic. This can be done using the address function in combination with the function substitute. The address function will add row number 1 to the column number of the sales units column. I will choose relative references because I don't want the dollar signs. And I will pack this function into the substitute function. Which will change the one that I added for the rows earlier to nothing. In Office 365, the trick is the same, but with different functions. For the total, I'm going to use the SUMIF function. The range to which the condition has to be applied is the year column of table 9. As a condition, I'm going to reference the same row in the year column of this new table. So that means that I'm referencing the same row in the same table. And the range to be summed up is the column of sales values of table 9, which is below. And because I need prices, I'm going to copy the formula and divide the summed up value by summed up units. 
To calculate only with visible cells, I will use the by row function, which is a helper function of the lambda function, to apply the subtotal function to the rows of the sales value column of table 9, one by one. Lambda function is used for creating custom functions. It needs a parameter, which is the cell reference, and the parameter has to have a name. I will call it this for visible. And the lambda also needs a calculation. So what should happen to the parameter? I will type the subtotal function. I'll choose number 2 for count. And add the parameter. The by row function applies a subtotal function to the rows one by one, and the subtotal function counts visible cells as ones and hidden ones as zeros. So in the end, we'll get an array of ones and zeros. Let's add the condition to the formula that the year in table 9 has to equal to the year in the current row in this table. The condition is also an array of true or false values that change to zeros or ones in the calculation. Multiply the two arrays and multiply by the column that needs to be summed up. Which is the values column of table 9. and sum the resulting array. So in the formula, the product of the condition and the visibility gives back an array of zeros and ones, which is multiplied with the sales values. And because I want the prices, I'm going to copy the formula and divide the summed up value by summed up sales units. Right now, both columns have the same numbers. Let's add a line chart. Format the chart. Let's speed up. Now with one chart, you can analyze the development of different outlets and brands as compared to the total. You can also make the filter function interactive using the same trick. Normally, for the filter function, you have to specify the array that needs to be filtered. In this case, table 9, which is below. 
and the conditions what to include. Each condition has to be typed in separately, and they have to be multiplied. For example, include outlets equal to outlet 1. And brands equal to brand one. Each condition has to be added manually. You can only switch dynamically between the outlets and the brands if you add a drop down list for each. A new condition, for example for the year, will again have to be added manually. Let's also add the headers. Instead of this, you can write a universal formula to link the filter function to the slicer selections using the subtotal function. Let's add the headers again. And this time, in the filter function, I will add the by row function, specify the column to which the subtotal function has to be applied row by row, In the lambda function, name the parameter, which is a cell reference, and to this parameter, apply the subtotal function with function 3 for count A, because the outlet column has text, and you cannot use count. Add the parameter. and select outlet 1 and brand 1 in the slicers. And you get the same result. Please note that in the biro function, you have to take a column which is well filled without missing data, because the subtotal function will count missing values as zeros and the row will not be included. If you like this video, please like and subscribe for more contents like this.